So in our last example here, we're given various angles and we have to find the arc sine of their sine or the same kind of thing for cosine and tangent. So it's very important that you be able to graph these on a unit circle. That's really the way you start a problem like this. So there's my unit circle. And that's 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now, negative 7 pi over 6, the negative means you go in the downward direction from 0. You go a little bit past pi, and negative 7 pi over 6 puts you right there, negative 7 pi over 6. So arc sine of sine of negative pi over 6, or negative 7 pi over 6. Well, the sine of that angle is the y-coordinate, and it's positive there, so it's arc sine, and that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so I know the common values there are one-half. It is positive because the y-coordinate is positive. So it's arc sine of one-half. But remember that arc sine is always between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So I want an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 whose sine is one-half. Well, Sine is the y-coordinate, so there's an angle whose y-coordinate is 1 half, and that angle is pi over 6. So my answer there is pi over 6. It's an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 whose sine is 1 half. Let's try the next one, our cosine of cosine of 4 pi over 3. Well, I find 4 pi over 3, that's uh, between pi and 2 pi. In fact, that's down here. Um, its cosine is its y, uh, sorry, is its x coordinate. So its cosine is its x coordinate. And There, again, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So it's cosine, cosine of 4 pi over 3 is 1 half, but since we're on the left side of the page, it's negative because the x coordinate is negative there. And now I'm trying to find the arc cosine of negative 1 half. Remember, arc cosine, you always look for an angle between 0 and pi. So I'm looking for an angle between 0 and pi whose cosine is negative 1 half. And there it is right there. That's uh, 2 pi over 3. It's between 0 and pi. And its cosine is negative 1 half. So our answer there is 2 pi over 3. Finally, we have the arc tangent of the tangent of negative 5 pi over 4. So let's figure out where that angle is on the unit circle. It's negative, so we're going around in the uh, downward direction from 0. 5 pi over 4 is uh, just past pi. So we go down in the downward direction, and we end up over here at 5 pi over 4. So negative 5 pi over 4, sorry, that's negative 5 pi over 4. Let me label that carefully. Negative 5 pi over 4, its tangent, well, its tangent is its sine over cosine, and that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So its tangent, its sine over cosine. A sine is root 2 over 2 because it's positive. Its cosine is negative root 2 over 2. 
That simplifies down to negative 1, so we want the arctangent of negative 1. Now, arctangent always takes values between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So arctangent, we're looking for an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 whose tangent is negative 1. So I'm looking for an angle whose tangent is negative 1. And there it is at that 45, 45, 90 triangle. There's my angle whose tangent is negative 1. And that angle is negative pi over 4. So to recap what really uh, made it possible to do this problem, we were finding sines and cosines and tangents to start with. So the first thing you need to know is your common values of sine, cosine, and tangent. You need to be able to graph these things on the unit circle. You need to be able to find, to, to uh, identify the 30, 60, 90 triangles and the 45, 45, 90 triangles and know the common values. Remember the common values for the 30, 60, 90 triangles are always 1 half and root 3 over 2. The common values for 45, 45, 90 triangles are root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So you need to be able to find, to, you need to know those common values and identify which triangle you're working with and then figure out which quadrant you're in to figure out whether the sine and cosine are positive or negative. And the way you remember that is by all students take calculus. In the first quadrant, they're all positive. In the second quadrant, sine is positive only. In the third quadrant, tangent is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. So, you figure out which quadrant all these things are positive or negative, and so then you can find your sine and cosine. And then what we had to do was find arc sines and arc cosines and arc tangents. And the key to that was, again, remembering the common values, but also remembering these ranges. Arc sine has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Arc cosine between 0 and pi and arc tangent between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So what we were doing at this step for all three problems was we had the sine or the cosine or the tangent and we were trying to find an angle in the appropriate range that had the correct sine or cosine or tangent. That's what arc cosine, arc sine, and arc tangent are. You're looking for an angle whose sine, cosine, or tangent is the value that you're given. So, and you're looking for an angle inside this range. So in each case we had a value and we found angles inside that range that had the right sine, cosine, or tangent. So that's what the answers are. So that's the end of our lecture on computations of inverse trigonometric functions. These are the trigonometry lectures for educator.com.